Been listening to this on loop all morning. I've been listening to this all morning on loop. I have a problem. I have a problem, ladies and gentlemen. It's okay, because the solar eclipse will cure me of that problem. Lots of interesting rhetoric going around with this today. Um, some people thinking the world is going to end. I do want to make the announcement. If you think the world is going to end today, uh, if you're getting raptured, I will not be. So I think you should all send me your Bitcoin. If, you, if the world's ending, you're not going to need tomorrow. I'll be here. I promise I'll do nothing but good with it post-apocalypse. So go ahead, send it on over. No backsies. That's it. That's it. We're going to have some really interesting charts to look at. It is Monday. I do not have actually a market review for you, but that's okay. We got other stuff to look at. Um, we got some big, big announcements, big announcements. One of which I want to share with you guys right here, right here, your boy. Now YouTube play button official, nice and shiny. Uh, I'm actually impressed. YouTube, this is a, is actually like a solid thing. It's not a cheap kind of, I don't know, like Chinese made thing. Um, pretty awesome. Pretty happy. I owe every single one of you guys a piece of this. And uh, wow, dreams do come true. They do come true, guys. Wild. Thanks for being here. Tuning in across the interwebs to Tom Crown. Your favorite, your number one crypto live stream here daily on YouTube. Uh, if you could, here's what I need from you on every platform. <clears throat> if you could do this for me, just smash that like button. Go ahead, share out the stream, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Put a live chat in the live chat. Just engage with the stream. The more we engage, the more YouTube shows this stream to other people. And I have a feeling today is not going to be the most popping day for viewership. We do have the solar eclipse, which honestly, guys, I mean, does anyone actually care about a solar eclipse? I mean, it'd be cool to see, right? But something's going on. Let's start with conspiracy theory hour here. What is happening with this? Does anyone else feel this? Like, we've had these before and nobody really cared. I mean, like, you know, when you were in school, maybe you went out and looked at it. I remember a long time ago in school, I think we looked at one. I don't know. Like, I get that. But outside of that, what's going on? Why is there so much talk around this? Why is there so much hype in the news about it? it this is it's just weird. Are we covering something else up? Is there something else going on today? My chart sense tells me there's something else going on today. Uh, so here in chat, if you're browsing the internet, whatever you're doing, if you come across something that is big, please share it in the chat. Maybe it already happened. Maybe it hasn't happened yet. Something tells me there is a big event going on, like globally globally charts seem to know the future and if we look at bitcoin we look at some other we look at some other charts where i get the the sense that we're building up to something now this is our ta from i believe last wednesday uh clearly just to update quickly for bitcoin no rejection at these levels i was looking for a rejection at either of these levels <laughs> professor beans is snoring so loud um i was looking for a rejection at either of these levels and bitcoin had a different plan here today moving above 71.3 and not just that back testing that previous resistance from the 31st of March potentially as support here very nice setup incredibly nice if we zoom out we start to see that flat top 
Flat tops pay bills, baby. Flat tops being one of the, if not the most bullish pattern we've seen over the course of the last year and a half-ish in crypto. And essentially, looking at this last price line, this dotted line here, we're really starting to see this flush out. Our lows have come up. The bulls were able to hold a higher low here early April, and now we have moved back above late March's high. Uh, a retest of this 73.1 area looks very good. We may get a rejection from there, and the bulls will look to hold another higher low, and that will really paint out the pattern. Uh, let me see if I can get this. Yeah, let's get this a little uh, cleaner here. This will really paint out the pattern. We're looking at potentially like a bull flag, a symmetrical flag here. And uh, at the moment, that has broken. I do not really like flags. I don't think that they are good patterns in crypto. Maybe they work in other assets, but they just don't seem, even if this breaks to the upside, it doesn't change my view. They're just so undependable. And kind of to compare that to undependable, making up words today, comparing that to the flat top pattern, which is very similar. You just get rid of the descending high trend. And instead you look for retests of the same resistance above. It can be like a double top, triple top, whatever you want to call it. All you need is for the market to continue eating away at that same resistance level. So we haven't touched 73.1 yet, but we may start to see this kind of smaller fractal pattern play out into the bigger flat top. I think this is very bullish. Interesting that we're seeing kind of a break from this chop on the 8th, on the, the solar eclipse. I know I'm going to say lunar eclipse at least once during this, maybe many, many times. But this is what we're looking for. We have followed this exact pattern all the way up, I don't know, since like 22, and it keeps bringing us to higher highs and that's very exciting. So this is what I'm looking for. So this could really play out in many ways. We may just push through it. We may move all the way up to the 73.1 target. And then we can come back down, honestly, back to the 66, 65 range. And we're still in this, baby. This is what I would like to see happen. Maybe even a uh, more bullish low. One that doesn't even retest the bottom channel. A break, a back test of 73.1, and then a move higher it does seem very possible in the short term. Here's kind of my two cent timeline prediction for this. Everyone knows the having is coming. We're cheering and rooting for it to be on 420. And if the heavens bless us and the spice gods agree, it will happen. And that will be the signal for great bullishness. But if it doesn't happen on the 20th, there's no escaping it now. We're at the point where it is so close and there's so few blocks left that there is simply no other outcome. Let me see. Uh, there's simply no other outcome. It's going to be here in April. Unless all the miners turn off. Maybe the maybe the solar eclipse knocks out all the miners, guys. Oh. Yeah, probably not. Probably not in the cards here. Uh, looking like the 18th right now. Moving up a little bit here, about two days. Looking about the 18th, I still think it's going to be on the 20th. This number is likely to slow down or possibly really speed up into the last like 24 hours of the halving. That is almost guaranteed. The static rate at which we've seen mining very likely to change at the halving. So long, long-winded way of saying this. I think that looking at today, if we get a good close, this pattern proves to be true. So there's a lot of ifs here. We rally until, what is it? This is the 8th plus, let's say 14, 22. Maybe until like the 22nd or the 20th, right before the halving, then maybe we see the pullback then. The logic here is kind of loose. It's kind of loose, not very scientific. Um, today is not just the solar eclipse. It's also a new moon. And while the moon is not the way that I trade, the moon does have some really spooky correlation with Bitcoin. New moons tend to be near swing highs and full moons tend to be near swing lows. So basically my two cent take is I think we see maybe we could continue to see rallying here or we pull back tomorrow. Huh? Either way, whatever direction we're moving after today, I think we're going to continue in that direction right into the having, and then we'll see some kind of reversal, whether it's macro or local. I don't know. I'm, I'm putting money on local. Um, Bitcoin has done a lot of moving above all-time high while simultaneously keeping hype very low. It almost feels like we're back in the bear market, doesn't it? 
I mean, price isn't necessarily going down, but after that explosive and exciting, I don't know, let's call it from the 23rd of January to the 14th of March, about a month and a half, uh, this sideways almost feels like it's down, isn't it? It's a really good time right now to kind of examine how you're feeling and acknowledge how this market can just mess with your head. Just mess with your head, man. It gets you kind of, it gives you like a bar of excitement. And that bar of excitement gets more and more and more and more exciting. And then it just takes it away and stops. And you're left with this feeling, this like negative feeling, this kind of gap or this void where it makes you, it makes you nervous, makes you panic, makes you anxious. But nothing's happened. Bitcoin's moved up to the right. It's doing so in, I would say, a very bullish manner. There are no guarantees, of course, in trading or in charting, but this is looking pretty good to me. But I'll admit, I feel it. This has been a journey, guys. If you've made it this far on this journey, give yourself some credit. You've made it through the hardest part now. Bull, market aren't e bull markets are not easy either, but you've made it through the pain, and now all that's left is kind of the engineered pain. The, the fake pain, we'll call it. Like the pain of missing out on a gain. That's not a pain. That's not a pain. That's just greed. Um, the pain of sideways, right? But we're up. We haven't even seen locally really lows break, you know? It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. This behavior, or at least this kind of, I don't even know if behavior is a word, but this uh, situation is going to be very common as we continue to the upside. Bull markets are full of these weird kind of manufactured feelings you're like man i'm mad i only made a hundred percent gain that's insane to say but it's going to feel real and it's going to influence your trading uh so this is your first rodeo i mean good luck <laughs> you found this channel you're going to be all right you're in good company but uh there's more of this to come there's definitely more of this to come it's very good times very exciting times I did see some random charts moving that probably nobody really wants to or cares about that much. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, the old NEO. NEO is not a coin that I really care about. It's an old 2017 coin, cycle coin, whatever. I don't really have any connection with it, but there is something I wanted to share with you guys because I have a feeling not many people remember. NEO was one of the first coins that we saw really pop off late 23. Now it's rallying again. Let me see where this started. Uh, October, eh, I mean, hits bottom in September, October, into December, January. I think everything had a red month in January, and it's been up since. I don't want to read into this too much, but I am desperately looking at charts and it trying to find something similar to what we had in like 2017. You guys know I love Litecoin. I still do. But there's a connection I had with Litecoin that a lot of OGs have, and they're going to back me up here. Litecoin used to run right before Bitcoin, like every single pump. Was that just random? Was it coincidence? Whatever. I don't know. Uh, different marketing conditions. doesn't really matter. But it was such a good signal. It was so dependable. It lasted for a few years and it really made trading easy. Now, will there be another one that does this? There'll be that, you know, you can basically bet on it. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe Litecoin again will someday or maybe maybe it already is working on it. But I'm looking for charts that are doing this. And NEO, I saw an alert go off today. I saw it at the top gainer on the day. And I said, I wonder, I wonder if NEO is signaling a move. Because this really was one of the first that caught our eye. It was a uh, very kind of exciting, at least for I don't know, the three people still holding Neo. I got some somewhere. This move here, so it was back in October, really took off. And this is when, when the rest of the market started moving. So maybe this is kind of a survivor bias for me after watching it. Um, or maybe it's coincidence, but Neo's moving again. So I am going to be continuing to keep an eye on this. If you've noticed, and this is your first cycle, that there tends to be some kind of like, we'll call it capital rotation, but some kind of kind of rhythm to the pumping, right? You'll see certain coins will pump at the same time, even though they're not really related. Uh, you'll notice at times that coins that simply have the same kind of alphabetical organization will pump. Uh, you'll see like, I don't know, coins that start with the letter N. One day you'll look at the thing, you'll be like, there's like five of these in the top gainers. 
Why? That's, I don't know, just the way it works. But there are kind of patterns when the market gets into, when the market trends, we'll call it. And those are valuable. So Neo, am I really going to get my hopes up that Neo is is like Bitcoin's going to a million dollars this second because of Neo? No, but it is interesting. I'm going to keep watching it. Uh, I think that it is worth it to at least put a little energy just into this concept and kind of have an overview of the space. Even though I don't plan on trading this or buying this or whatever, um, it's just interesting to me. Do you guys have coins that you've noticed recently or maybe even in the past that have had relationships like this one that comes to mind for me as well is not litecoin but starts with the letter l weird uh link chain link in the bear markets this is actually the opposite chain link in the bear market from like 17 to 21 just rallied the whole way through it it was very wild you know we'll pull up link because nobody really wants to look at neo if we did want to look at neo really quick here $27. That's that's where Neo looks like it's going. It's your monthly resistance. You're in this point of market inefficiency. You've broken past resistance. You back tested it. Now you're moving to the next point of efficiency, also known as resistance right here. $27 easy peasy. Let me pull up link though. And also I apologize to Pickle taking timestamps because I'm already making it difficult for him. Already making it already making it difficult switching back from the charts so this is link in dollars and this might not be as apparent as what i'm going to show you link against bitcoin lots of you will probably remember this because it was remarkable remarkable absolutely remarkable let me zoom out here l uh link btc right here hopefully you can see that see that well just moved up and if you think that's not that crazy just trust me it is nothing else did this what's up vipin i see you brother nothing else did this through the bear market in in 17 to 21 like nothing trended like this against bitcoin everything else basically trended down uh this was i will say almost the reverse indicator this was the kind of bearish indicator okay and what's really cool and doesn't actually line up as clean as i thought it would so maybe not quite as cool link did top out in 2020 i was i thought it would be 21 honestly but it topped out against bitcoin for now in 2020 and then just trended down so link may have been a bear market indicator as it was moving up in the past and then reversed and maybe now bull market indicator i don't know Maybe that's a little tying strings together. I'm just trying to communicate the concept to you guys that this space is all interwoven. It may be becoming less interwoven over time as there are now stablecoin pairs for everything. Uh, lots of coins no longer are just traded with Bitcoin specifically. And you know we have things like ETFs. Uh, they're kind of their own pools of assets. There are other dynamics at play. So maybe this one isn't right, but there are likely to be more in the future or ones I'm not seeing or haven't seen yet. So just cool stuff. Let me pull up the chats here. Let me pull up the chats. I promise I didn't mean to ignore you. You know I love every single one of you. Let me get these going. Let me see. We got a good group. We got a good uh, solar, solar eclipse group. By the way, guys, if you wonder why I wear sunglasses, it's so that when the solar eclipse happens, once every whatever amount of years, I don't have to worry about hurting my eyes. This is a friendly reminder to not stare directly at a solar eclipse without the proper eyewear, guys. Do not go blind. Don't do it. It was funny when Trump did it on TV and we were like, God, you're not supposed to look at that, buddy. Wait, wasn't it only like four years ago? I don't know. Uh, but don't do it. Don't go blind. Not worth it. We got a good crew. I see you, Andrew. I see you, 100 Air, Joe, Han, Lamy, Randy, a big... Red Man Snacks TD Tesla. What's up, guys, over on the vertical stream? Reminder, we do have the regular horizontal stream as well. You can join us on. I see Adrian Arnott, Alchemist. Alexandra G is here. I guilted her into it. I was like, Alexandra, why are you? I see you in all these other live chats. Why are you never in ours? I extended the invitation. It's good to see you, darling. Alpha Glitch, Armand, Bradley, Clark, Curb Shifter. I need my cod jelly. Shout out John Doe. Shout out It's Autopilot. Shout out Quicker. Shout out Line in My Pocket. Shout out Moggy. Shout out Mugs. Shout out Loading Name. Shout out Ube. Shout out Ono oh Y2K. Shout out One With Nature, Pablo Jr., Pacer21, Paul Wood, Randy. Randy twice as nice. Randy Greer. Ran VJ. Robert. Robert Nitz. Ruth Lobo. What's up, Ruth? Sandy. Small face, no toe. There's got to be a story there. Stymie, Sneerdy, Sin, Pickle, my man. 
Typical Dave, unknown, unknown, up and run. Vanessa, another beautiful lady joining us. Where's Coins Chick? We must assemble all of the beautiful ladies. We got Moggy. We got Vanessa. Where's Jess? We need Jess uh, and Coins Chick. And then we have Maul. <laughs> Venom Hex, Vinny, Whale, Hizaji, Will G. What's up? What's up, LTHC? I see you, man. Who did I miss? Oh my, Pain. Mitrala, there he is. Zachary. How you doing, Zachary? Sandy. Silent 45 Auto, Sejours. We got a lot. Greetings from Uruguay. Are you guys seeing the eclipse today, Juan? In Uruguay? Uruguay. You're, they speak Spanish, right? Let me see. This is apparently the Times. We got Dallas, Texas. I heard that there were over a million people estimated going to Texas for this. Wild. Wild to me. Uh, then into Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, and Maine. And that's going to take what it looks like over the course of... Why would you do this? Why would you change time zones here? That's very confusing to me. Why would you do this? Partial ends, totality. So it looks like we have... God, what time is it in CDT? CDT time. 12. It's 1220. So an hour and 20 minutes until the totality, totality, Mortal Kombat uh, in Texas. And then it looks like it will in the next, what, two, three hours, make its way all the way up to Maine to carve out this path. Um, I think it's all kind of silly. I didn't read. I didn't catch your uh, conspiracy theories. You got what? Where are they? What? What is happening today that this is supposed to be covering up? Can Can anybody find out? Did anybody find out? But uh one thing I will say that is cool about a total eclipse is a, a full eclipse is pretty cool in general. It does block out like almost the entire sun for a few minutes, which is very unusual in the middle of the day. But uh, there is another cool thing that people might not even know about. And this is all we're going to talk about this. Don't worry. Uh, solar ecl eclipse. Shadows. The shadows created by a solar eclipse are really cool stuff. I'm going to show you a picture in the well, this isn't a topic I really need to talk about. Uh, here's a cool one. One more. There's another cool one. Okay. It creates very unusual shadows. This is the only thing I can think of that's like actually kind of hype about this event. You get these circular like shadows that have light around them. It's like a, a shadow shape you might never see in like real life. Here's another one outside of an eclipse they're like little uh crescent moons it's pretty cool stuff and they appear like all over the ground apparently there you go there's your two second lesson on eclipses by tom crown hey <laughs> i love that song um we might we might look to do more with with that music i'm loving it eclipse hype says will you're here i see you man greetings greetings cheers sejours greetings max Hit Tom, please analyze Bitcoin, says Vinay. We did a little analyzing on Bitcoin. We're going to do a little more. Don't worry. We did our first DGen Friday. Did you guys like that? It hurt my soul a little bit, but uh, I am an entertainer. I'm here to make boring things fun. So let me know. We'll do it again if there's enough support. Miniature crop circles. I like that. Yes, miniature crop circles. You got an extra pair of glasses. All right, hit up Cryptomania24. He's got an extra pair. If you happen to live like on his block, I'm sure he'll uh, he'll let you borrow them. You got those cool ass shadows all over here in Texas last time. Erase, you're in Texas. Who here is in Texas? No, actually, rephrase. Who here is at a location where they will see the totality? Like that they'll be in the uh, the actual like four or five minutes of darkness. Just put some in chat. Just let us know what state. You don't have to dox your state, but like just let us know. I'm curious because I'm not. Yeah, I won't be able to see it. From where I'm at, we I don't see it. Maybe it'll be like kind of plasma cutting goggles. Well, nine out of ten welders watch Tom Crown, so I know that most of our viewers are equipped with the correct eyewear. Indiana, Europe, North. Wait, is it happening in Europe? You are the totality. I am the toto. I am the totality. Totality is a sick name. Central Texas, nice. Colorado, I see you, Matrilla. What's up from Denver? What's up, Denver? Totality. Totality. I know I can't stop saying it's cool. North Missouri, Texas, Illinois. Lucky. Lucky. I don't know. I kind of want to watch it, but like at the same time, 
I wonder if we could just get, I bet someone's live streaming it. However, I would caution against pointing your phone at it. If you're in one of those states that you're going to see it, uh, I'm not a scientist nor safety expert, but I got a gut feeling that pointing your camera directly at that is going to really mess it up. Maybe when it's totally, when it's totality covered, it's okay. Cause I don't think you even need glasses when it's like complete cover, but the second it isn't in complete cover, you get blasted. So I think it'll mess up your phone. You might want to Google that, but just, just think about it. Think about it. Plus, you're not going to get good pictures anyway, guys. It's going to look like crap. You know that. You can see my eclipse in full totality anytime. Thank you, Bradley. Appreciate you. Probably will not take you up on that offer, but I am flattered nonetheless. You point cameras at welding. How does that go? Actually, oh no, why 2K? How does that work out? I would assume that's like very similar, right? Kind of uh, intensity wise. Does it mess up the camera? Totality. I know, it sounds awesome. It has insurance. You're supposed to have, uh, there we go, Zachary Martin with the science. You're supposed to have a special lens on the camera. I bet. Eclipse will change Trump into Trump Wolf. That might be the single best comment on our live stream that I have ever read. Wow. Hats off to you, Paul Wood. Hats off to you. You know what? It's, it's a new month and we have some memberships to give away. I think it's a, a good as time as any on the totality to give them away. What do you think? Make sure you have uh, memberships gifted, enabled, because I'm just going to give them out randomly during the stream. The more you engage with this live, the more likely you are to receive them. So, you know, engage with the live. It's time. It's time. Totality. You can't see much because the camera doesn't know what to do, I imagine. I imagine it does not. Elon just tweeted rockets. Is it in all caps? In all caps? Or just like regular rockets? Totality gifted. <laughs> oh, man. I, that's one thing I love about this community. I'll get into the... We're going to do TA here. Just give me 30 seconds. One thing I love more than anything about being a YouTuber or whatever it is you want to call me, influencer, crypto guy, it, the community being all around the world and having different opinions on all kinds of things, opinions that are so different, typically in society today, people can't get along. There's so, such different opinions on things. Crypto brings us together somehow. We, we're united against the greater front of evil, against a, a more oppressive, I don't know, threat. And it just, I love it, man. We get opinions from all around the world. We get breaking news in like real time. I love it. It warms my heart. Heaven Peck warming up the gifts, gifting out one himself. Bad Baptist, my guy. You want it. I like it. That's my meme coin, Totality. It actually is a really badass name. <sighs> we're united by the love of money. Badger, exactly. See, we're so different that we even view this. We view what connects us as different things, yet it still, it still works. I love it, man. Crypto is the single best community ever. Of course, it's toxic and awful like all of them, but nothing else. Where do you see people on like the far left and the far right Coming together and being like, yeah, F the government, guys. <laughs> we're, we're in on this other thing. Like, nowhere. It just doesn't exist. And it warms my heart. I love it. We need Bitcoin. Exactly. All right, a little more TA. A little more TA. A little more TA on the corn. So let's look at this weekly here. Weekly did not get the close we wanted last week. Yesterday. Didn't quite get the close. But it still got a very solid close. Let's take a look at this. On our stream, I can't remember if it was Friday or Wednesday. It was probably Friday. On our stream, I was talking about the potential for last week's close. We had a very low wick, but we had a long wick under the candle. And that was showing us buying pressure or bullish market participants buying up price. It moved down low and they said, that's a good price. We agree. I'll buy it. The long bottom wick was our first kind of solid higher time frame signal. We said it would be obviously ideal and the most bullish to see that weekly settle above 71.3, above the previous week's open. That doesn't take much expert knowledge to understand why. Simply, it was a red candle, then it turns green. I mean, that's bullish, right? We said that does, that might be a little hard, but we have one more kind of goalpost that we can use to say we'll still get a bullish close, even if it doesn't turn green. And that is above 69,000 flat. 
This was our previous resistance from the weekly time frame. Early March, we rejected from that price twice. We moved down to our range low. However, then late March closed above that previous resistance. And then last week, we did fade it. We did go much lower, but we closed above. So what did we do? We performed an SR flip. Resistance at 69,000 became support. Even in this week, which is only traded for a few hours, we have actually already moved back and tapped 69,000. A little bit of a wick. This is a fresh weekly candle, so there's not a lot we can do to read into it. But we can, of course, look at it and say, well, right now, above 71.3, the target we were hoping for last week is very good. Very, very bullish. Pretty much regardless of what happens in this weekly candle in the next six days, obviously trading below 65K going to be a little sketchier. But in between 69 and 71.3, we're really looking at a lower time frame, flat topped triangle play out. We're seeing our lows come up and we're seeing resistance tapped over and over and over again. Closing above 71.3, I have a feeling we either blast through it if we're going to close above it, or we close like right here where we are in six days, just above it. And it's annoying. And we continue kind of to float to the upside. That's all I'd like to see this week. 71.3, baby. Higher, better, obviously, but above 71.3, we have painted a very strong, not only order block on the day, but also strong order block on the day, but also our resistance confirming as support. That will be a great signal to the market, a very bullish signal to the market that we're looking for further upside. I'm not sure it is a mystery to anyone that Bitcoin is looking for further upside. We're at an all-time high. We haven't sold off. We've really, really haven't even seen much, like much bearishness at all. We haven't seen like flash crash wicks or anything. Um, something that did, I'm kind of noticing here right now is this pattern on the week with our low mid-March and then our low early April. This is now starting to look a lot more like something we were hoping to see kind of back here at 69,000 and I'll show you. We're going to actually go down to a lower time frame to the day for this. This is what we were looking for. It's starting to look like it. It's a little bit different, obviously. History sometimes rhymes, it's never exactly the same. But this move it's starting to look like this in my opinion. It's going to take a little bit of the imagination. A little bit. But the kind of macro or the the big takeaways here this was what happened last time Bitcoin broke its previous all-time highs. It was in 2020 at the end of the year. Bitcoin moved up to its all-time high at 60, or 69 at just under 20,000. Sold off for, I think it was a 20% retracement. Moved slightly higher. Sold off again for a higher low and moved up. I'm starting to see kind of what we saw on the weekly resemble this. What do you guys think? I actually don't remember what this looks like on the weekly. Let's see. Let's see. Getting the alpha in. Getting the alpha in early. Uh, Nothing. Actually, you know what? This kind of does. This kind of looks a lot like it. Ooh, boys. Ooh. So this would be uh, what? Mid-March. Close higher. You got the wick. You got the wick from last week and you blast. Now, not nearly as clean, obviously. Not nearly as clean. The wick faded it. Um, we did not see the wick to, uh, breaking through the all-time high move directly back again. So there's some differences there, but that is looking to me rather similar. Do you see it? Epic. Epic totality. MCI says beautiful green candle. I see it. I see it. I see it. Interesting. You get like these wicks. The only thing that would be missing is this week blasting off. If we do get a blast off this week pre-having, I really, really, really think it's likely we see a retracement on the having. Bitcoin in its history, uh, Lord knows why, probably whales, institutions, engineering, liquidity, tends to do the opposite. Like if everyone's like, oh, having's coming, very bullish, tends to sell off. 
I don't think if we trade sideways that it will have that same effect. But I think if we get like a run up, maybe we move to like 90, just under 90, then like having we come back down. Very possible. Very possible. Just shaking them out. Getting people hyped, shaking them out. That is that is the bull run. Marcus Cypher B looks good on the week. Kind of cruising here. Let's go down to this day for a little more info. Lots of lines. <laughs> Lots of lines. Um... Okay. Yeah, man, I like this. This is what I like even more than the weekly, the daily on Market Cypher. We had a little, little trigger wave, a trigger wave, and then another one. Our lows came up here. That is sketch. This started to look pretty bad. This is how we see lots of major sell-offs play. Bulls not letting that price drop pre-having, saying, no way, Jose. Momentum's moving back up. VWAP on the upside. Money flow a little uh, uncertain. This is actually, I didn't notice this. Maybe this wasn't true earlier when I looked at it. It's hitting a lower low here after a lower high. Hmm. That might give us some intro week red. That might give us some intro week red. On the day-to-day, -day, I'd like to see that close above 71.3. Any time frame, just close above 71.3. That's it. Things are looking good above 71.3. Retracements don't really line up with much. If we do get maybe a strong, or no, let's say this. If today, you know, we dick around in this price area, then at the end of the day, close below 71.3, but just slightly, maybe into Tuesday, we see a move back. I would likely target the untested daily order block right here, and that would give us eh, 68.5. That's also the 0.5 retracement from this local low to local high. And it sits right there underneath 69K. So maybe it would be a good place to kind of sweep longs that opened, uh, test that resistance as support, and potentially put in what I was saying with a even more defended low. Higher low, higher low. But kind of like breaking that pattern, not going back to that ascending trend line. I like it. I like it. What about our moving averages? Have we got anything? Moon phases, moon phases. It is not just the lunar eclipse, it's also the new moon. We do tend to see swing highs on these. Last new moon, uh, we we're actually kind of in a similar fractalish looking spot with a higher high locally. And uh, right here, these would be the equivalent days. We then moved on to new all time highs. It looks like that would be like yesterday or tomorrow, kind of in timing. Not bad, just something to look at. Just a little, little excitement, a little, a little astrology for you. 20 daily moving average supporting that order block that we were potentially targeting tomorrow, 68.5. See that 20 moving on up. The 50 gliding with it. Man, these are, these are getting escaped. What's interesting is this sell-off has not brought us as far down as the ETF sell-off. On January 11th to like 15th, we went all the way to the 100 daily moving average. On this move, locally, up here in the 70s, we haven't even seen the 50 tested yet. It's interesting. Hmm. Could still be in the cards. That would be a little bit of a shakeup, but that really would only be at 65K. That's hardly really anywhere. It's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. One more time. One more time, people. Who I didn't see the beginning of the stream. One more time, baby. My baby. Each one of you owns a small piece of this. We should make an NFT. I should make an NFT for this. Not like to trade. Not, not for sale. I should, I should make an NFT of this with like 100,000 fractalized pieces and I should give all of you one. Wouldn't that be cool? Hmm. Might be a cool idea. What does it mean? No, you can't redeem it. You can't get a piece. <laughs> it's just for fun. Just for funsies. What do you think? I don't really know how to do that, but uh, maybe I can figure it out. Ooh, Lux Algo. By the way, shout out to our sponsor, Lux Algo. Lux Algo is the number one indicator, scanner, crypto stock Forex company on TradingView, and in my opinion, in the world. They are wonderful. They have thousands, hundreds of free indicators on TradingView. I keep saying thousands. So what happens when you hit 100K, you stop thinking in hundreds. 
Uh, they have hundreds of free indicators on TradingView. I highly recommend you turn, check them out. They have a whole team of engineers. They make great stuff. They also have premium products like signals and overlays that I have up right now. Check them out. Use my link. There is a 30-day risk-free trial that you can sign up for, guys. You should all do it. Just give it a shot. Risk-free. 30 days. Use my link. TomCrown.io slash LuxAlgo. It's in the chat. It's in the video description. But looking at the day, we have been waiting. We've been waiting and wishing and wanting. Oops, one sec. Hold up. There we go. We've been waiting and wishing and wanting for this. Uh, on the 16th, I remember, I think we were live the next day. We saw our green trend on the day via signals and, uh, signals and overlays turn purple, which typically tells us a change in trend. It doesn't mean if it's green that you're going straight down or that it's very bearish, but it shows you that you've kind of distanced from the trend you've been on. That signal turned out to be prime here prime as price really just traded sideways we did hit some lows but we really did see exactly when this told us a change in trend now here's what what's exciting and i did not see this until right now today on the 8th mark your calendars bitcoin with a strong close and that apparently is anywhere anywhere above 71.4 I'm not sure how much farther down this can go right now because I didn't catch this earlier. But at this price, we are seeing the the trend finally change back. That is very exciting to me. Uh, it does also give us a potential upside target for 76.3. This is our resistance band. Though on a strong close today, we may see what happened here where our support band became resistance. We may see that flip on today's close. We're gonna have to keep a close eye at uh, six hours. Let's look back really quickly and see how did this perform, let's say, at the ETF, the ETF uh, volatility. Green trend changed on the 12th, exactly when the market sold off a day after the ETF. The trend changed to purple, and then on the 18th fell into a bearish trend, and what did we do? We set two lower lows. That remained true until the 7th of February when the trend changed again to kind of indecision and then on the 8th into the green trend and what happened? Boom. Nice little 66% rally. Now guys, I don't want you to be disillusioned. This is not a free money buy sell machine, but out of all the indicators I have seen attempt to be this, this one's really good. I wouldn't ever encourage you to just like buy right now because it says buy or sell because it says sell, not like that. But this can be used in confluence with other signals, other patterns, whatever it is you're looking at, I think very successfully. If you want to check out this uh, indicator specifically, like I said, they have a ton. If you want to check out this one specifically, there is a video, a long, a long form, in-depth video on this indicator on our channel in the educational playlist. So check it out. I like that. That's a good piece of confluence for me. That's good. I'm going to look at these low time frames really quickly here for my own benefit. So I have a little background of what is happening on the charts I'm looking at. Here we go. Here we go. I like it. Okay. In this hour, while we've been streaming, we have come back to 71, 288, 71.3. Let's take a look here on these low time frames. I'm liking this RSI. Nice high RSI on a move up. That's what you want to see. Don't let the bears fool you. Money flow on the hour coming up, making these nice bullish trends. I appreciate that as well. Really quick. Two hour reflects that. That's good. 45 minutes, same thing as the hour. Looking strong. I like it. 30 minute getting a little bit tired. Hmm. I would really like to see 71.3 hold. Like I would, that is ideal for me. I wouldn't, I'm not going to take this trade, but it is so important to me right now that I think you can very easily come up with some kind of trade thesis here, some kind of invalidation. Uh, is this a good one? I don't know. It's probably good as any, but uh, kind of just looking for a, any kind of stop under 71.3 with a take profit up here at 73.1, the top price, the very highest point of our market structure here. Uh, if we lose that, where might we look? Let's get our FIB tool out here for a sec. Wow, we're at the 382. This is this is actually kind of spicy, boys. A bounce right here. So if this trade doesn't get stopped, that'd be a very powerful move. Now we are in low time frame, so you always have to take that with a grain of salt. 
But moving back to the 382, finding support and moving higher is a very bullish retracement. Uh, typically, we call the 236 a shallow retracement. We call the 618 the golden Fibonacci retracement. That is down at 70.3. And of course, if our stop gets hit here, that's the likely next downside target. That is probably visible just by looking at this chart. You connect this local high right before our pop, and that's right at the 618. We have some nice confluence there. So this would actually be, in my opinion, a much better trade. Let's see what this might look like. I really would like the take profit to be 71.3, though. Something like this. Do it two to one. Can't get a good risk to reward on that. So maybe this isn't a great trade. Something like that. Something like this. I really want to see this bounce. All right, really low time frames, and then we're getting back to the chat. We're going to see what you guys are looking at, talking about today. You know what? Let's just move this down to 71.3. See? No, down there. Hasn't filled yet. Son of a bee. Get a four to one. There we go. One minute. So really low time frames. Of course, this looks bad. But we're on the one minute. And whether the one minute looks good or bad is not really a concern of ours unless we just opened a big position. We hit a high, higher high. I bet we have bearish divergence on these highs. Brought us back down. Now, this wasn't bearish. That's good. We moved above. You can even see we consolidated here on the one minute for a little bit. Came back to that resistance, tested it as support. But where, uh, where it gets a little bearish on these low time frames is this right here. Now, I don't hate this rounding top, especially kind of where it ended up right now. I don't hate it. But here's what happened. You went back to a significant resistance. You found support. But the bulls really were not able to move price. Doesn't mean they can't here, but they were not really able to move price here. So what I see is the beginning, potentially, without a break of our high, is a lower high flat bottom scenario. To invalidate that, what do we need? So we can actually come up with another position here. We can come up with a different trade. This time we would be looking short. I don't think this is a good idea personally. I don't think this is a good idea. Okay, there goes Professor Beans. I don't know if you heard her. Probably heard the, she probably heard the mailman. Let's see. There we go, right? The 618. Okay, I like that. Stop where? All right, this is the trade thesis here. I don't like this trade. I'm not going to take it. I'm not encouraging it, but I'm just putting this out there. Basically, this is a play on that pattern playing out. The stop really just has to be above our previous high because if we break this high, we are no longer painting this pattern, right? So our invalidation sits just above 72. Now our take profit is going to be a little harder. Um, I guess we would just target 70.3. That gives us a little bit, of, little bit more room to the upside. I'm going to say 3.5 to 1, just like this. There it is. These trades, I think, are solid, especially if we get both of them to fill. Might see this play out. If my thing will even cooperate. Like this. Or, or, we aren't in this pattern. And we do something like this up to our extension. Now we're not in that flat bottom. And we'd want to be in that long position. Cool. There's two different ways to approach this appeasing the bulls and the bears simultaneously there you go fam okay clean this up and then we're gonna see what you guys are looking at has anyone found out the super secret conspiracy cover-up that this totality is based on has anyone found it yet let me close the door being still barking hold up give you guys a play one sec Hey.
I just keep listening to it on loop. It is so loopable. All right. All right, he's here. I knew the viewers should be a little low. What are you guys looking at? What a bop. What a drop. What a bop. Drop. Stop. We going up or going down? Epic chart reading. Thanks, Varen. What would be better? We're going up. Nobody knows. And wait a minute. This wasn't about a prediction. Oh, the bear. Oh, the salty viewers out there. This wasn't about a prediction, man. Showing you how you could approach a trade in either direction here. It's called edumacation. Bitcoin eclipse. You better stay near the end, near that sell button. Hey, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Who's spamming? I'll see. Ooh, Vinny. Vinay. One piece of information NASA suggested. Holding a pair of eclipse glasses in front of your phone's lenses. I mean, that makes sense. That makes total sense if you're... If your eyes can do it, then certainly your phone will be able to. Getting bit. I appreciate that, man. I caught it. What's up, whale? Whale. His Ajzi. Rune BTC. I don't think I've looked at Rune in a while. Anybody else want to look at Rune FBTC? What do you guys want to look at? <laughs> Varun MJ. Bro. You're, you're, you're a jokester, man. Take off your glasses. You take off your glasses. It's a, it's a, sol it's a solar eclipse, bruh. You don't take off your glasses on the solar eclipse. I don't want to go blind. Trump eyes. Super. Uh, myth. Tom NPC is now on Mech C. What? I'm on Mech C. Solar crown. I like that. <laughs> Safety first. Right on. Right on. Does your babe trade too? Trading babe? I'd love to get a trading babe. You need to record it with your phone or no one will believe you. Are we trying to get people's phones broken? Is that what we're doing today? Don't do it. Don't do it. Orn. What are we looking at, guys? There's like zero consensus in the chat. What do you guys want to see? We, I see like each person saying one chart and like nobody. Usually there's like overlap. Usually people like want to see the same thing. Is literally nothing trending right now? Is that what's happening? Oops. There we go. You're up there. You're up on the chat. What do you want to see? Avax, Brett, please. Ulrich, you missed our meme, our meme Friday, man. I looked at all the shitters. XRP, FBTC. All right, I've seen two FBTCs. BCH, what is, what is up, the arch? Sorry, I've been, uh, I have not been acknowledging this, the subscribers the way I should. If you have subscribed today, I want to take a second to personally thank you. You are the top G. I see the Arch Devil subscribed, Sujoy, Saha subscribed, Santarios94, Trader Skater, Proton, Gageabo, Random Stuff, Noir Ali. This guy, Greeton. Greeton? Greeton. What's up, Greeton? Uh, Rahul Golandi, Abish Kesh Kurana, Nayangaba. <laughs> These are some great names, man. I missed a super chat by Bayshore Pet Spa, Dog Grooming, Bradenton. If you live in Bradenton, I recommend Baby Shore Pet Spa. Because <laughs> they gave me $5 on YouTube. Bird Dog. This is not DGen Friday anymore, guys. It, apparently, we had some uh, fans of DGen Friday, so we'll, we'll have to do it again. Fifth member of the boys club. I don't even know what that means. Super strong community. Oh, that's good. G Gaga. Chopping some wood? Maybe. Buying dips. Stuck everything in a Faraday box. All right. Interesting. Interesting. What's up, Juan, uh, Juan L with 100 ARS? I don't know what that is. Watch the XCH Chia chart. How much are ours? Times 100. Gave me 12 cents. You give me 12 cents. Like, I, I'm not going to yell at you for giving me 12 cents. I'm like mad. Did you just give me 12 cents? It really lets you super chat 12 cents. That's wild. YouTube. YouTube took uh, probably like four of those pennies. Taxman's going to take another three. Crypto Clown World. What's up, man? What's this stream about, Anna Velasquez? That's a really good question, man. I We've been live here for five years, 
and I am not sure, but people keep showing up. We got over 100,000 subscribers now. In fact, we will be at 104,000 subscribers just like two weeks after our 100K. Maybe today we'll be at 104. This just came in the mail today. So what is this stream about? It's mostly about Bitcoin. It's also about trading. It's also about sunglasses, um, random music, video games at times. I don't know. Cracking brews, rolling them up, rolling up J's, I, whatever, whatever you want it to be about. Really, I just go through charts and show you my trades and set up trades. That's about it. What you should do, no matter what, is you should join the Discord. Discord.gg slash Tom Crown. Join the thousands of members from all around the world, active 24-7. Thousands of years of trading experience combined in there. And if you sign up with any of our partners in the video description below, you will get exclusive VIP access in said Discord for free. It's all free, man. I don't really charge for stuff. I'm not a great businessman. I'm more of like a guy who just stacks Bitcoin for years and it's worked out. To prove that, you can check out the playlist, the number one free crypto trading course on YouTube. It's free. I say I don't charge you guys for nothing. Just for nothing, man. You can find it on the channel or I put the, the playlist link in the chat. There you go. I didn't answer my own question. That might be filling right here. Thank you, Alexandra. Best TA in town. Thank you, brother. Congrats on making 100K. I was talking about, uh, I was talking about fractionalizing this play button into 100,000 pieces and giving, airdropping you guys one. One piece. It'd be cool, but I don't know how feasible that is. Maybe I'll get an expert. That cool guy really wants to look at XRP. Is this a trading session or a commercial? Well, if you keep asking me questions, I have to answer like a commercial, then it's probably a commercial. 11 minutes till the eclipse is 155. Uh, what location? Ah, in Texas? Yeah, yeah, that should be right. Okay. We can get to some more charts. FTA. Let's start with Ethereum while you guys figure out what else you want to see. We did a pretty in-depth Bitcoin TA already. Let's look at Ethereum. Ooh, I see why you're looking at Ethereum. Right on. Nice. I, that is wild. I was, I was a little sketched out by Ethereum back here. End of March, right here. It was like on top of our big box flat top but didn't break out i guess it technically held this low i see why you're looking at it ethereum looking very spicy today we're we're gonna take some time on this give me a little bit here let's zoom out nice ethereum on the quarterly back to green this is gonna be the like the major price to battle here for ethereum for the next three months i mean likely it will clear it put it behind it but 3645 I mean we already had our line at 363 but we're going to update it to 3645 because that is the quarterly open good to see ethereum back in the green for the month let's go down all right there we go in february blasted blasted through resistance very nice March took a little breather, did hit higher highs but not quite i was calling for a new all time high i was like i, I don't know why ethereum wouldn't just go to 4600 maybe not even break all-time high but you broke your monthly i cannot draw straight lines today broke your monthly this is it this is like all of the resistance for ethereum 2700 to 36 whatever you want to call it we get that from right here 2022 when the bear market moved in full swing ethereum moved very gracefully through inefficiency and then very gracefully through the efficient market price action, through that resistance, really took some time, but there we go. Going to Nashville, buddy. Hell yeah. I'll see you in Nashville, my friend. Let me know. You're in the Discord, right? You can just hit me up. We'll grab a brew. We'll grab a brew. Maybe we'll have a, if enough people go, maybe we'll have an event. I don't know. I was looking for 4,600, didn't quite get there, but these monthlies are not convincing me that I was wrong yet. Let's get out of the week. Ooh, interesting. Very, very uh, neat and tidy here, Ethereum, on the weekly. That's kind of cool. Look at these weeklies. 3450 to 3645. 3650. Back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, luckily, our lows are coming up. 
closing as wicks it would not be a huge surprise to see ethereum close below 3645 again uh, as it seems to love this price it does however uh, how close are we very close if ethereum breaks like even ten dollars higher like march 24th weekly currently at 3669 just needs to make like 3681 if you break that weekly i think you get a move to 3882 again that could give you the breakout we'll look at the ethereum pair here in a second to uh bitcoin ethereum pair to get a better idea but uh that would look very likely and since it's right there already i'm probably going to make that the prediction for this weekly time frame i think we're moving to 3882 any weekly close above 3645 going to be very nice though it's going to set that price up so let's this is ethereum man ethereum we're going to get rid of some clear this up we don't really even need this anymore there we go here we go on the day close higher close right where you are the day is looking good Take a look at Marcus Cyber B. A little bit weaker than uh, Bitcoin. You have the, tr like on Bitcoin, we got trigger wave like this guy. Then we got like an upside trigger wave. Then we got a smaller downside trigger wave and then started moving up. Ethereum hitting lower lows on momentum, but oddly money flow looking better. Hasn't quite broken its Jan uh, March 17th low here, holding onto that after a higher high. Kind of conflicting actually. I have a feeling that the secrets of this chart are going to be held in the Bitcoin pair. I have a feeling. If they're anywhere, they're going to be held in the Bitcoin pair. We were, I was looking for this diamond or something to play out. This is just kind of a weird, kind of just like spaghetti, man. Just like a spaghetti chart. You're hitting lows, you broke a high, you hit a higher, higher low, you moved to a lower high, then you broke the low. It does look like accumulation to me. It does. I have this question mark here. It's like, what are you doing? I mean, on the week, the last few hours, you're above where you started last week, but that shouldn't be a surprise as price is looking pretty good. Mm. 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 A little potential hammer coming on up on the month. Let's see. 0511. I do not want to see Ethereum BTC trade below that. If it can hold this low into the end of April, that looks so good. The logical upside move clearly 0539. That's that's not a huge move. That's a very small move even. Man, it's not even 5%. Hmm. This is going to be where it gets interesting. This is where it's going to be interesting. Fall, big old whipsaw. You fell again. That's not ideal. Ooh, F. Literally setting off alerts right now on the dollar pair. There it is. Just hit. Just broke higher, I think, than the other, the other day. Got it right now. Three, six, eight, four. This is going to get interesting. I think Ethereum is going to look to retest this. Now, here's the issue. You found support. You broke it. What can you be doing? You could be looking to retest that as resistance and move lower. I don't have a reason to think that's going to happen quite yet, but that's going to be the battleground on a bigger time frame for FBTC. Yeah. Oh my. On the day, it's like you're right here. Jesus. This is kind of what I was talking about with the monthly, except we see it on the daily as well. Resi support, resistance, break, back test support as resistance, move lower. Now you're back up to it. You are in a position that can give you a nice breakout. Maybe you'll start painting an inverse head and shoulders on the day, something like this. Right? You're right back to resistance. Not quite the time, I think, to get excited for F BTC, but more so the time to get excited for F dollar. F dollar. You're above the high. I send it to 3882. Let's go. I mean, this could happen. This could happen like today. A little bit of accumulation here underneath resistance. Moving higher. Nice. I think this is a very good sign for uh, for the corn as well. Very good corn sign. Our trade got stopped, got wrecked, riggedy wrecked back here on the 16th of March. 
Just you know, take a screenshot, remember it, make fun of it. Yes, yes. Sorry, I don't hide my losses. That looks good, man. This looks very good. I think we might see 3882 today. Let me throw a fib on this, a little extension, and then uh, we'll see what else we can find. 1618 of 4K. Maybe retest in there. What's corn looking like? Still doing that. Hmm. Hmm. I don't really have a trade for you. I guess you could try to scalp. Try to scalp long from three six four five up to that three eight eight two, but I don't like that trade. I think that's that's just way too impatient. James Morgan, my guy, became a member. Whew. Appreciate you. Speaking of members, I forgot. I forgot about this. Here you go. We're gonna gift out some of these membies. Boom. Fire away. Make sure you have um, channel memberships enabled. Opt in. There's five. I hope you win. What's up? Shan Cav. Kaushik. Kila Gone. Kan Chan. Ethan. Mohammed. Mr. Brave. Got a lot of new subscribers. Keep them coming, boys. Keep smashing those likes and subscribes. It's time to do a different chart. I think Ethereum is, is moving up. I think it's going to have a green week. I say 3882, but let's just say like range highs, 4K. Probably a better target. Bitcoin fill in this theoretical short position. Theoretical. Morning, morning. Good to see you, my friend. I'm going to put in a little bit tighter alerts here. That way when I'm going through other charts, I'll know if I miss anything. Can I check Polygon Matic Scorch? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we can look at that. Matic uh, underperforming the market. I'm actually surprised. I'm surprised simply because it looked like it was ripe to overperform. But then you look at Matic Bitcoin and you say, what in the actual hell is going on here? Like, What is actually happening here? You had a double top at quad zero six six five. Yeah, a double daily close at like quad zero five five. And now you're, what are you doing? What are you doing, Matic? It's interesting because it's it's similar, not the same, I'll say, pattern as Ethereum, but it's a similar setup as in Ethereum had this long range, this long period kind of in a price range. And then over the last few months broke low and now has that threat of finding support as resistance on the way up. What you really want to see is this if you're a Matic, heavily invested in Matic. But Matic is sliding lower against Bitcoin. That isn't unique to Matic. Like I said, Ethereum doing it. Virtually everything is doing it. Virtually all the coins that have been around for a long time. But when you see Matic BTC reverse, that's probably going to be a good signal for Matic dollars. Matic didgeridoos. Let's look at this weekly. Ugly rejection at 120. It did not hold support at 79. Yikes. Did not fully fill the monthly gap either. Lots of indecision here on this chart. Long stopped out again. Rip. Rip. That was such a good trade, too. Such a good trade. Uh, 80 cents. This is the only way I can really view Matic. Like, 80 cents would be a great entry. I might look to make a position there, even if it's only back to seven, uh, 97 cents. But right here, I, f I feel like it's a little knifey. It's kind of uh, just knifeish, Sharp. You do have a higher high, and as long as you don't break January's low, you have a higher low, so you're still trending up. But I really wanted to see this, man. I really wanted to see that monthly. Say, uh, monthly. Uh, let me rephrase. January resistance. You had a uh, lower low, but a higher low. Then you move to your next monthly resistance at 120. I wanted to see the rejection back to that resistance to hold a support and move higher. That's what I was thinking was happening. Last week's close really kind of mucking it up. I think if Matic doesn't close this week above a dollar, it is heading towards that 80 cent mark. If it can retake that monthly um, monthly support, not find resistance there, retake it, close higher bullish engulf, I think you're moving to 150. I'm kind of shocked. I'm, I'm kind of shocked, man. This looked so good. Like if you you remove 
April and March. Beautiful. February closed bullish engulf on the month. This was back when we were seeing tons of coins do this and then run to like their final monthly resistances. Like if this were to follow many of the other charts we saw, it would have gone to 250. March gave us a spinning top. Tall, tall top wick, short bottom wick. But it did close green, so it was... It held on to some of its bullishness. April not bringing us any kind of gifts. The gift would be 80 cents, along at 80 cents. It can randomly bounce here, move higher, go into the green, then head towards, you know, two bucks or whatever, but I don't like it. I don't like it as a trade. I don't see an entry for a long until 80 cents. Would love to, uh, love to just see it rocket up, but I'm not seeing it. Not seeing it, fam. Sure, fam. Bitcoin Cash. I do want to look at Bitcoin Cash personally here for a second. BCH BTC up to zero one resistance on the week, moving back down. May see a retest zero zero eight five. That would not be a bad trade if it comes. That'd be a good trade. Give it a three to one. Or do we want to take it down here? Zero zero seven five. I like that more, maybe. I'd rather miss this trade than enter too early. That's pretty much always my motto. Here we go. How's that look? I like that. I like that. If we flip this upside down, we can see that Bitcoin Cash does appear to be reversing on a higher time frame against Bitcoin's value. This looks like a blow off top. This is inverted, so blow off bottom, giggity. Some kind of like failed rally here. Now you've fallen farther. It is essentially like a double top here. But the worst case scenario I really see is another higher low and then BCH moving higher against Bitcoin's value. BCH just had its halving though. So it does make it a little weirder, a little bit weirder to trade. I don't think I would open a new position on it. Personally, we see too much kind of shenanigans after halvings. Uh, if you caught the long at 600, consider how much profit you're in still at 683 decide how much profit you want to take i still think there's a good chance of this 800 filling even if it looks like this potentially back testing resistance as sport on the daily here you really have to hold tight really need a, a tight hold on that if I wasn't in a position, I don't think I would short yet. I think I'd prefer to wait even for like 600 again to see if you can get along. But you, I, I don't know if you'd want it then. At that point, you've tested it multiple times. You've weakened support. I don't know. If we remove Bitcoin Cash just having its happening from this equation in my head right now, I would not, I wouldn't be saying these things. I would be more we're still moving to a thousand. We're still moving to like 850, 800. Um, so that very well may be the case still. I'm just more skeptical once the halving comes. Same will be true for me in Bitcoin. Like April 21st, I'm probably not going to open any new trades. That's me. That can be boring. Boring just like Bitcoin. As Bitcoin fills our short, being boring. Has not moved really. In this live stream, we've gone from 71.7 to 71.2, uh, not even 1% move, back to 71.7. Again, not a 1% move. What I don't like, though, is this is looking still like we're getting these lower highs. That's why we put up this theoretical short with our stop at our local high and targeting the next downside support. We still have our long potential open as well, looking for something like this that breaks our pattern, but hasn't filled. Kind of just waiting and wondering. Crow, crow, crow. D Godfather wants to look at Crow. Matic and QNT have been the biggest disappointments of this bull run for you, crypto clown world. Bro, you're talking to like a guy who has just loved, still loves and supports Litecoin for like the last eight years, man. If you need a little pick me up, you need a little pick me up out there because your coin maybe not doing that hot. Here you go. This hopefully this brings a smile to your face. 
This is Litecoin against Bitcoin on the monthly time frame. This ain't no daily candles. This is no hourly candles. These highs back here, the all-time high, December 2017. Here you go. I'm here with you. I'm feeling your pain. It's part of our channel. <laughs> Look at that. Look at it. 2,300 days. I still believe it'll reverse. It's not, I believe it'll reverse. I believe it'll retrace. I'm not sure if it'll ever hit a new all-time high against Bitcoin. I think it's possible. But I have a very good feeling it's going to end up somewhere back near this 0-1 mark. This can't continue forever. That's this, this my opinion. So I'm there with you, man. Your coins are doing bad. Look, Matic might have heard me even talking crappy about it and it's making moves for you. There you go. Literally while I talk shit on it. Uh, literally. What's up, plastic bag? I see you subscribing. Two names that I have no way of pronouncing. I see you. I see you, though. Where's the other one? And this one. It's not playing. What is this show about? It's, it's a lot of technical difficulties while streaming live. It's not going to do it for whatever reason. There it is. Hey, this guy. I see you. I see Ami William Vladimir Ride Shankov. James Morgan, uh, Gifton. See all the new subscribers. Appreciate you all. You're all great. You're all wonderful. When Lambo, Lambo today. Can I look at Near? We'll look at Near. Yeah, Near has been running. Near is one of the coins that I kind of am aware I haven't looked at enough. Near hit six bucks. Let's go. See, that was the, this is the Matic setup I was talking about. It had the bullish engulf close on the monthlies, just just like Nier does, and then it blasted off. I don't know. Maddox just didn't do it yet. Last time we looked at this, we were looking for six dollars. Six dollars. Now it's seven forty-five, so it seems that six dollars was right on track. Already in April, we've moved back to the six dollar mark. That could be the back test for the month. Ooh. Looking for something like that. Rip open the week here. Okay. Double. Double test on the week. Less confident for me. Do not love that. Not quite a double bottom. A little bit lower low. But you are chilling here. Bears haven't brought you back down below. Not bad. Not bad. Let's see. On the week. Nice weekly target. I can see 825, 824. Very conservatively. These are fib. Two measure move. It's at $13. I like this. Using $9 down to six. A break of nine will give us a signal. Now we're looking for 1330, baby. I'd say 13 flat. It's our two measured move target. That also happens to be, I believe, the last monthly local monthly $13 does look like the real resistance here you have these wicks you're, you're gonna see something at 20 if near somehow manages to move above 13 I'd likely see like a 20 then a move down to 13 again shake out maybe get a higher low then you go up if near breaks its all-time high let's get our moon math out because I'm not sure I've ever done it <clears throat> our 1618 of our bull market high to our bear market low sits at $134 that'd be a great target for near Measured move gives us even more moony targets. Sun targets. We're not even about the moon targets anymore, man. We're about the sun targets today. Ra. $441 as the measured move. Possible. Peak bull run. Possible. Either way, if near ever hits either of these, great spot to look to take a little profit. Doesn't mean you have to get all out. A little profit locked in is always healthy. Always healthy. There it is. There she blows. Uh, a good trade, it seems. I guess we looked at near more recently than I thought. Uh, probably on the 27th, 28th. Looking for that back test. We got it. Let's see. Get a little bit of bull div off of our daily low there. It's a weak bullish divergence. Double bottom plus lower RSI low. Day looks all right. Marcus B looks all right. Hmm. Now, this is actually looking like this. Back here, right here.
That could be in its future. This is the bar pattern. Bar patterns are fun. They're not super serious analysis though. They're just fun. It's gonna be like beautifully at our stop. There we go, something like that. Ooh, that, that definitely puts our stop in danger. Oh well, is what it is. I see something like that playing out. It is looking kind of similar to this. You got the double wick bottom. You are setting lower highs just like you are now. That could change. I'm gonna lock this, keep moving it. No, not clone. That could change here. You do have a higher high on the day. You do have a higher low. Uh, I see a little uptrend developing. It's a little uptrend. I think it hits $13 this year. Like, I couldn't tell you when. Could be this month. Could be next month. Could be December. But near is looking very good. I think at worst, we get this repeat where we get kind of another low break. Trades down low. So it kind of creeps up and then makes a move just like down here. Near's looking good. It's looking very good. I don't know if I own any near. I probably have like some of it somewhere, but not an amount that would matter. Congrats to anyone who held near from well, like any of this period, December 22, October 23. You're in some serious profit. You're nearly there. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Yes. Yes. Bitcoin. Just a little bit more. Hold up. Hold up a little bit more. Get out of this short. Break this high. We just need above 72 K. Five minute giving us a little rollover. I like that. Don't love the 15. 30 is very choppy. One minute starting to trend up. I like it. This is putting our short in danger. Remember our thesis though. Our thesis was this. If we break a higher high, we aren't in our bearish pattern. We're not in a descending high flat bottom pattern, which we would look to dump. So we placed our stop just above it. This was, of course, theoretical, guys. I put these up here just so you can see a trader go through how they might approach a trade. It is not financial advice. I do not recommend you blindly copy my trades. Not a good way to succeed. Not even just my trades, anyone's trades. Don't, don't blindly copy anyone's trades. It's not a good way to win. What's up, ADD, Dad? Can, I, can you look and see if Wi-Fi, oh, God. Oh, man, I get bad vibes every time I look at Wi-Fi. Just for you, ADD dad, because I'm also ADD. Okay. Doing a little bit better. It is doing better than the last time I looked at it. This wick was just ridiculous. I remember it was like a day or bef maybe two before this wick. Someone asked for it and I said 1766. Traded to 16 and just crapped the bed. Now, it is looking a little bit better here. After crapping the bed, it did come back to previous... What is this resistance? Tested as support. Retested 1,000 or 10,500. This is the Uber resistance. If Wi-Fi can actually close candles above 10.5K, 17.6 is very quick, very close behind, even as high as 25. Just up to resistance. You don't have much resistance here outside of that 10.5. That's the boss. This is not terrible looking from a more macro view. It's not terrible looking. That wick was brutal, though. Look at how clean this chart is. Monthly. What is this white one from? I don't know what that white one's from. There it is. That white one should be right here. There it is. Boom. Done. Yeah. And then you go to the month and you're like, close something above 9.1. I think that Wi-Fi will have a big move. I, I don't have any passion for Wi-Fi. I think it'll have a big move, though. Just needs to close anything. Just anything above 10.5. So much so that I will set an alert right now. Done. Done. What else? Crow. All right, Godfather. For you, Crow. Just for, just for you. You subscribed, right? If you're a subscriber, make an exception. Crow look good. Crow looky good. I like this. I like it. On the month, closed last month, finally, finally above July 22's high. Beautiful close. Nice wick. Nice wick. Beautiful, strong close. This monthly now red, but it's done something very, very nice. And that is, it's moved to 13.7 cents. This was the top of our resistance range. We broke through. 
this back test may be, as we zoom in, may be the entry. Let's see. Ooh, it almost even touched 11.5. A little low. A little low, but I don't hate this. This looks like flagging out. Man. There's a big move for Crow this year still. Let's see where our trades were. Didn't fill at 9.7. That is okay. Just barely, barely didn't fill on the 20th. We haven't updated Crow in a while. Barely didn't fill on that 20th. Here we go. The only one that filled right here. No stop. Sweet. From 13.7. Targeting up here at 32, man. Something tells me, though, that these might still fill. Might still fill. A little bear div on your highs. That's okay. Money flow slightly lower. Need Yeah, you need to see this pull up again. This needs to make a move, man. I don't want it to sit here. I think if it sits here, it's going to move lower back down into these retracement levels. Uh, 25 cents might be a good target. 25 cents from 13. I like this chart, though. As long as candles on like the weekly or above 13.7, I think Crow is slowly moving up here. Slowly. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. I'm going to set an alert as well. 18.2 cents. Let's go. Let's go. Row. Doge. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, yeah, fun fact. While I sit here and procrastinate, I met my new baby nephews. Haven't met either of them. They were born like... One was born like on COVID, one right after. So I haven't seen them. I met them yesterday. We went to, as a family, a bunch of us went to a uh, kids like amusement park thing. Holy crap. I am wiped. Those kids, man. I don't know. Shout out to everyone in here who has babies. I am wiped, dude. My neck is sore. My legs are sore. Like I'm beat up. So I'm a little, uh, a little slower today than usual. That's okay. That's why I'm a little grogger. A little, little out of it. But it was wonderful. They're wonderful. Five years old and three years old. Infinite energy. Had a great time. Infinite energy. Let's zoom out on Doge. Doge Doge. Ooh, boy. Ooh, boy. Man, it certainly certainly uh, ran into this 20 cent resistance, didn't it? Last month closed higher into resistance. Now this month we did see a wick down to 16 Kind of middle of nowhere on the monthly chart. There's no real support there. You can see our high wicks from November closer to like 15 cents. That does give us a local monthly resistance at 22, but that's not the end of the world. I think this is going higher still. Nice. Okay, this wick has a little more rhyme and reason on the week. Last week's wick low brought us back to our weekly order block or res uh, support below us. It still is unfilled at 15.4. I think if you do see 15.4 on Doge, that's a good entry. That's a good entry. Oh, it already was. Of course it's a good entry because that's where we entered. Yes. Nice. Yeah, another one. Man, we were feeling ballsy. Feeling ballsy. Here's what I'm looking for. If uh, Doge can get above last week's open at 22 cents, we are looking for the full retest of the big boss the big boss resistance this is it if you're a doge fan this is all you should care about in my opinion and this is basically a range from 20 to 25 cents i know that's a big range but after that i am speculating we see virtually no resistance back to the all-time high my kind of game theory here is this is where all of these fomo doge entry retails this is roughly around going to be their cost basis, like 26, maybe 30 cents. Obviously, the less lucky ones are going to be a little higher. But this is where I believe we will see those weak-handed dogers get out. They saw it go down. Maybe they bought at 75 cents. 
see it go up. I think they're looking to get out here. And that is partially a hunch, of course, but it is also reflective of the monthly time frame. Looking at the monthly, you can see this block here. This is one of the biggest kind of order blocks I can show you on a crypto chart. We saw uh, on Ethereum, a weekly look something like this, but this is a monthly. Doge essentially ran up to 75 cents and then spent more than half a year just sideways trading right here. You had some wake highs, wake lows, but closing candles in this range over and over and over again. So there's literally resistance on this chart, but I think there's also the psychological aspect of, well, maybe maybe people who FOMO'd into Doge in 21 weren't the highest IQ. I don't know. <laughs> I have Doge. I still do. Uh, but I think that they'll logically hear 25 cents or a quarter and look to either get out of their position or take profit. Now, it doesn't mean everyone, of course, but I think the bulk of those still looking to get out will get out here. After it gets above, it's like 27 cents. After it gets above these, I don't think that there will be much at the all-time high. I think there's maybe an argument at like 50 cents or something too, but I think this is going to be the boss. You clear the boss and I think Doge moves back to 75 cents. Break in 75 cents, I think we could see a $4 Doge. I think we could see a $4 Doge this cycle. I think Doge has been a good bet. It was looking very shady back here though. This was getting me very suspicious. You've had some very, very clean moves. This is what you want to see, man. Testing that resistance, breaking it, coming back, cementing it as support, creating a healthy climb, a healthy staircase behind you. And this is it. 25 cents. I think it's got what it takes. Bitcoin, move, dude. Move. Today's the day. Do it. Do it. Bro, trade with suit here. Bro, bro. Draw it fib on mother candle. Bro, bro. 19th mother candle. What? What? What is this language you're speaking? 19th mother candle. 19th of what? Mother candle? I don't know, man. Shout out to you, trade with Sue here. I don't know what you're saying, but I appreciate you. Short movie explanation. Hey, Tom, I think you are not a good trader. You're a very good trader. You had me in the first half, my friend. You had me. <laughs> appreciate you. What am I trading? Honestly, not a lot right now. Uh, someone else asked me this morning, have I been trading a lot? No. No, we did a lot of trading. We did a ton of trading, like into the end of last year and then at the start of this year. But I have done very little. I've made very few trades since here. So it's been 26 days. I don't really like chop. I'm not really a chop trader. I, I like trends. I like swing trades. I don't really do a lot of scalping. When things are very boring, I've scalped live here. We'll do it again in the future. We've done it many times, dozens of times here. But it's just not my jam. It's more stress than I would like. It isn't really the kind of setups I like. You're kind of more favoring market orders and things. It's not really my jam. Once we break out of this range, I'll be back on it. I'll be back on the trades. But this is what I like to trade. This is not really what I like to trade. <laughs> this is what I like to trade. I'm not much of a, like here, God, this was three months I did so little trading. Almost none. I don't like it. I like trending markets. They can be up or down. But I'm not a huge swing. I mean, I can. It's just not what I like to do. I think it's too much stress. Too much stress, not enough reward. Ivan R hates chop. Chop haters. Shib easy trades. Is Shib easy trading? Ethereum breaking out again. Uh, well. All right, Ethereum. Here we go. Ethereum heading to, as, in, as said in this stream, I'm thinking 38.8. 38.82. So that could happen today. It's looking pretty likely. Looking likely. But Ethereum, Bitcoin, this is what I'm really watching. I would love to see this close above 0511 today. If we see Ethereum, say we see Ethereum run to 38 today, Bitcoin then makes a move maybe to that 73.1. We could see this happen 
and unfortunately end up with a very similar outcome as the end of March. You don't want to see Ethereum Bitcoin lose. You don't want to see it lose this local resistance again. Close above, make your way up. Maybe you paint that inverse head and shoulders. Either way, get out of whatever this spaghetti is, dude. This is just spaghetti candles. There's very little here. You could say it's like forming a big bear flag, maybe, but at the moment, this just looks like spaghetti to me. The spaghetti. That reminds me, I haven't pulled up Bitcoin dominance lately. I haven't looked at it on stream. I don't think there's a change or else I would have gotten an alert. Nope. Right where we left it. Right where we freaking left it. <sighs> Touch the trend back down. Cool. Cool. No, no update. Nothing of interest here. This does look good on the day. I will give it that. That does look good. Some kind of janky flat top. I don't know. What is this? It's like an upside down triangle. You know what it might be? It might be an inverse head and shoulders. What do you think? I'm kind of bullish on dominance. Maybe not like today, tomorrow. But I think we're going to keep seeing these lows come up and I think we're going to see a break to the upside. That would likely not be very bullish for FBTC. But maybe they'll take turns. Maybe FBTC will get a run first. Carryville has totality on NASA stream. Ooh, let's see. Let's see. Let me see if I can pull that up. NASA live stream. This way you don't actually have to go outside. Anytime past 24 hours. I hate articles. I hate news articles. It's like watch NASA live stream in one place and then you open it and it isn't a, where's the link to it dude where's the link to it that you just you baited me you click baited me i would have never guessed that the internet would have clickbait on oh oh you see nasa youtube maybe i have a feeling they have a youtube rudders yeah rudders what are they doing Ooh, there's the totality totality very exciting stuff it's like watching people watch nighttime it'd be cool if they gave us like a i don't know a shot of the sun maybe nasa that would be interesting i mean who am i to tell you what to do nasa but we're gonna we're gonna live stream a picture of the floor for the solar eclipse okay nasa has their own they got two live streams. Holy crap, NASA. They have 856,000 people watching this one. That is the most I've ever seen on YouTube on a live stream. Holy crap. Do they have the live stream enabled? That shit will be popping. Not only that, though, they also have a second stream. This is through a telescope. Carryville, here it is. This is what you're talking about. Thank you, brother. This is a, a live view of NASA's lens cap on their camera, I guess. Like, what is this? What is this? It's a prank? This is insane to me, though. They have almost a million people on one stream. And then they have 300,000 people on another stream. Those are the biggest numbers I've ever seen on YouTube in my life. That's just bonkers. Bonkers. Is this real, though? Look at how few participants they have. We probably have more participants than that in this live stream. More coming out of the woodwork. Oh, there we go. Maybe they're commenting because this is happening. Is this on like a delay? You can see you can see a like a text bl like blinking thing at the top. What's happening? Leave it to NASA. Leave it to the government to have terrible live feeds of everything. I hope we missed it. <laughs> All right. I tried. I tried. We did our best. We tried. Let's see, it's 238. How long have we been live? Went live just before one. Viewership. Only 500 live viewers. That's okay. 500 on the main, 120 on the uh, vertical stream. Still not bad. Not bad. Pretty good for nothing going on. The only thing really of interest to me right now is Ethereum. 
Ethereum is making some moves. Let me see if CoinGecko can back us up here. CoinGecko, what do you got? What do you got while we wait for Ethereum to pop off? Gala. Gala keeps being in like trending and top gainers, but it has not broken its high. I do not know why it's trending. Neo, we looked at Neo at the beginning. Toncoin. I don't think I've looked at Toncoin in many, many a moon. Let's see how many moons. Nope. I looked at it last month, apparently. This guy sees too many charts. Toncoin disrespecting the doodle here. Giving it the straight middle finger to the doodle. Goodbye, doodle. Looks like accumulation under 550. And now today, ooh, new all-time high. Let's go. New all-time high on Toncoin. Let's go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I think we did, uh, I think we already did our moon maths. We'll do them again because it's not here. Here we go. Connecting our all-time high to our all-time low. What do we get? One... 0.618 at 1875. Not a bad target. And our bear market fib extension brought us to the all time high. Man, we're past it. Tomcoin's going to like 10 bucks quick, isn't it? 1875, great take profit. Now people are going to say, should I buy it right now? If you're, tra if you're trading spot, you can do whatever you want. If you can just hold that position until it's in profit, there's a lot less risk. There's a lot less. Uh, to consider. But if you're looking for some kind of degen leverage, you gotta play it different. We did have accumulation here at 550. We have broken high today. I would not look to enter here today at 620. I would not. We don't chase. We're not chasers here. What I would consider back at the previous all time high that was broken today. Ten goes broken 24th. Broken today. I could see a play like this happening. Now you're not guaranteed to get it, but like we say, I'd rather miss the boat than board the Titanic. Because we have a really big extension to the upside, I'm not even gonna not even gonna pull it to there. I'm just gonna pull it maybe to the measured move of the bull mark uh, bear market extension. We can get a pretty juicy stop down here. Under five dollars. You know what? We'll do both. We'll do both. 1875, 240% gain. Even with our stop down at $4, we're still at an eight, almost nine to one. We can even bring it all the way down to March's low. Below 330, and you still get almost a six to one. I would rather play it in those ways, here we go, than uh, looking to simply market order right now i think that that's a great way to market order into the top great way but i'm going to set an alert here because we're in price exploration ton is trading out of value it's never traded at and so our analysis cannot be the same analysis that we do on charts that are not there is no resistance we have no trapped sellers above us outside of the last i don't know like five minutes from 6 30 to like 6 18 Instead, we use different tools like the FIB extensions. We use psychological numbers, etc. Anything is possible. I think it moves to 1875 by the end of this run. Bitcoin looking to invalidate that short, and I could not be happier. The, the short not stopped out yet. Still a little bit of wiggle room, but not a comfortable amount. It has broken its high here. So our thesis still solid. Still a good trade, in my opinion, even if it gets stopped out. You were looking for a pattern. You had an entry. You had a stop loss. You had to take profit. That's a good trade. Technically, this is already invalidated. He set a higher high. High, low, lower high, higher low, higher high. Now you're in a short-term uptrend. Got like 18 more minutes on this candle. One minute left on the 15, looking to close strong. No bullish engulf off support. 30 minutes still looks weird. 45 minute coming back up. 
I think we see 73-1 today. What do you guys think? I think we see 73-1. What do you think, Dasapu? What do you think? Subscribing. What do you think, person whose name I cannot pronounce? What do you think? Keshav Sony, Dale, Umar, Vadilivu, 2K Gaming, Ikiro, Sid and Nathan, 2009. I missed a $5 super chat from Zima. What's up, my friend? Zima Duvant, ICP chart. I don't know if you're still here, man. That was 26 minutes ago, but I'll pull it up. We'll look at it. We'll look at it. Bitcoin looking so good, though. I think we get 73 1. Dale. Dale the man. The man. ICP versus Bitcoin. Kind of a bloodbath here. Kind of a bloodbath. I think uh, ICP versus Bitcoin is looking to retest last month's open. It's about a 10% move to the downside versus Bitcoin. So it doesn't necessarily have to move at all down in dollars. Let's see. Whew, finally hit last month, ICP finally. Showing the value of the analysis that we've kind of applied to every chart to just make it systematic and simple. Hit 21 on the dot, closed below previous monthly now we have a red candle on the month let's see here let's see 1330 let's go down to the week hmm. Bear div on the way up on the week, and we're getting that everywhere. We've had bear div all the way up. You can see here, ICP last last week, the week before, hitting that twenty one dollar mark higher than the first of January. Yet your relative strength index or your RSI setting lower highs. So that is bearish divergence on the weekly time frame. Bum bum bum. I don't really see a clean move like. Kind of, it looks like it wants to retrace. It looks like it wants to retrace, but I don't see a super clean setup here. Let's go down to the day, use our Fib tool. We're gonna look at our local swing low to our highest point in price here. Where does that bring us? 13, 1370. I'll take 1370 to 1330. No guarantee of it moving here, but that would be a nice retracement previous monthly bounce potential. I think ideally, if you have ICP and you're looking, you're betting up, maybe you're already in a position. What you're really hoping for here is that this local bottom is in. You have a little descending channel. You just want to see this break and move up. As much as we always look for this and I always want to see these clean retests happen, I don't really think that that is what's going to happen. Crazier things have happened, but I this doesn't look right to me. I feel if it moves back to that 1330, it's it's shown too much weakness from that resistance. I think it will be kind of too retracing, too too much retracing, too much power. I think you want to see this really hold these lows, which won't give you a good entry. Ain't that the truth? Money flow in the day just looks weird, but you are starting to hit higher highs here. VWAP at the zero line. I think that you have a good bet. You might have a good bet on this moving higher. For the scalpers, 17, maybe 17.50, 17.15, the weekly open, especially if this week fails to break 18, you see it maybe just move back up to the previous week open. Into April 15th, maybe you can get that entry at 7.15 and, and look to ride it up. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard for me to want to go long after you've hit the upside target. We were looking for this $21 mark all the way back here. Pre-2024. Finally hit. This is when things get harder. It's harder to like figure out where you want to go because you've missed 100% move. And now back down to even where you were is like a 50% move. Obviously, if $9 comes, I think that would be it. 
I would maybe look to buy some, but this is sketch. I would start looking at 1330. If you're scalping next week, not this week, but next week, maybe that 1730. Yeah, it's rough. It's rough. All right. Our short did not get stopped, by the way. It did not. Whew. Still in play. By a hair. Something tells me we get this, though. Hmm. All right. If you haven't joined the Discord, join the Discord now. Discord.gg slash Tom Crown. It's the best place to be. What's up, Craig Tensi? Once again, the mighty Dayman, fighter of the Nightman, champion of the sun. Ooh, such a good day for that. Master of karate and friendship for everyone. Dayman battles the evil Nightman, stealer of boys' souls. The eternal struggle. I love it, so it's sunny, dude. Great reference. Love you. Love you, Craigton. Appreciate that. If you haven't joined the Discord, you should. Discord.gg slash Tom Crown. It's free. If you sign up with any of our partners in the video description below, you'll get freer, even more free, exclusive VIP access. Any of them. Doesn't matter. Dealer's choice. So you should do that. It helps support the channel. You're using these things anyway. That's it. Doesn't cost you anything. So you should join. You should also make sure that you've subscribed, hit that bell button, liked the stream, etc. We are live here, publishing content daily on YouTube, and it's so good. It's so good. Today's stream was a little tiring, or a little, I was a little tired. I had a big day yesterday with family, uh, a little sore, a little tuckered out, so sorry. I didn't have the energy I wanted, but we got this, baby. We got this. Thanks to you guys. Shout out to Lux Algo. Get your one month risk free trial. TomCrown.io slash Lux Algo. And you know what, boys? Go look directly at the sun. No, don't do that. Don't do that. But enjoy the weirdness that I think is still coming today. I'm going to go eat lunch. If we break 73 1 today, I'll stream again. So fingers crossed, I'll see you in a little bit. That's all.